Hello, I'm George Hayes, and this tutorial is going to be on how to use TrueType font with the SDL 2.0. And it's going to be a fairly basic tutorial as far as setup and actually getting the font up on the screen and a little bit of the keyboard stuff with it, but we're not going to the point of building a full keyboard handler. That would have to be set, done for another tutorial. Anyway, as you can see right now, I have a window up on here, and it's just got a very short sentence on it and I'll go ahead and run it again as you can see pops up just fine all right and so we'll go ahead and jump into getting it up and running and first off you're going to need to sit there and download uh, from libsdl.org go to forward slash projects and make sure you've got all the previous SDL stuff set up and then you need a true type font one here which you can get and as far as out of the projects and you have to do the forward slash projects up there because I don't remember if there's a link or anything to get to it um, anyway the one you want to download is just mean GW tar.gz since that's the environment I'm building right with right now if you're using uh, one of the other platforms uh, visual C++ and all it says what to grab as far as on that here okay now as far as your compiler settings and all, you have to go as far as in the compiler and make sure your linker settings has the TTF in there, minus LSDL2 underscore TTF. All right, if you haven't got it, um, you're also going to need your minus SDL2 for your uh, basic and your images one in there. All right. These are additional ones that I'm using, and of course you're going to need minus MINGW32 as far as in that. Then as far as search directories, you'll need to set up your TTF just like your SDL1 and so on. Now as far as that goes, I have my SDL, as if you have to look uh, at my previous videos as far as the setup ones, and it'll show you as far as where the directories are and how I set them up. Um, I keep my SDL directory under C, all right, and I opt all the packages into there and then decompress them and so forth uh, and archive them as far as into this area here. Now, as far as the TTF one, you're going to need to grab the top one here if you're doing 32 bit, bottom one for 64 bit. And, uh, I do have setups for both of those. Right now, I'm using 32 bit as far as for this. Um, your DLLs that you need to include in your uh, by, uh, directories for running the program are here and you're going to need those as far as uh, either to be set into your project directory while you're testing it and then later on when you go to distribute it needs to be in with the actual you know executable your binary okay uh, your include is here that's where, this is where you get that from as far as the includes here you can grab it for that uh, so I got my TTF right there and then you're going to need to do the same thing for your linker just to, as a reminder and right there it is and you can just grab it off like that and then you come in sorry and you just hit add and paste it in there I've already, sorry I didn't copy it, so here, do it real quick. Control C, go down here, hit Add, Control V, and then you can paste in, and I've already got it, as you can see right there. So, uh, just remember to do all that stuff as far as on yours, and that should allow you to sit there and use it. Now, my first directory here, uh, it's SDLH, included uh, images, then SDLTTF.h. I have IO stream string in here also. Okay, basic uh, setup with uh, as usual, you know, as far as with the windows and so forth being up here. If render event handler uh, screen width and height and display rectangle as far as dealing with that. Then I have texture for the background, all right, and rectangle for the background. Then true type font load in as far as for it. Then message, all right, which is a surface that it's going to. Then a texture that it actually uh, is changed into, 
and a rectangle for that texture and the color of the font message. All right, and this down here is actually just for another um, doing it two different ways. Some stuff I'm going to show you as far as in here and make some changes while we go along. All right, uh, game sits there and basically sets these things to null and so forth like that as far as your pointers, font, and message, stuff like that. Um, probably should go in there and do text as well. Yeah. All right, so then on execute, we initialize, then load material, then go into our game loop, and then after we exit the game loop, clean up. All right, on initialization, we create our window, create our render. We initialize TTF here with TTF dash init. It doesn't get initialized by this up here, okay? loading content just loading the background all right and setting it to the size of the window and so forth like that then we sit there and load the font in right here with the f going into font all right using ttf open font fairly simple check if it's loaded if it didn't it exits all right then down here is that short message all right we convert that sdl texture to us from a surface to a texture all right get the size of the texture and so forth to create a rectangle all right then don't really, not use an event handler at this point we just render a copy of the background and then the text as far as this way up onto the screen at the position we specified in the rectangle all right so we can move the rectangles x y position to move the font to where we want it as far as on the screen and if we want to see that we can do uh, let's see, load content. We can sit there with was zero zero top left corner. We can make it 50, 50, re render it, recompile and re render. And you see it's been moved down here. All right, so that's fairly basic. Um, I'm going to line this out here a second and switch, make a few quick changes. Include these two lines again and go up here to event handler and uncomment this. All right, this, there we go. Will basically allow us to type in the code over here like this, and as you can see, it's also getting duplicated on the back area over here. Now, if we hit backspace and function keys and so forth it actually puts out as far as things like this so but you should notice that you also if you hold down any two keys it doesn't matter which one you won't get but the very last key will continue on all right so that's the reason you're going to need to actually create a keyboard handler when you want to handle multiple keys being pressed at one time and my suggestion is create a class that keeps track of the state of those things and then set up your keyboard to push put into that and then you can check your uh, key state as far as using your keyboard handler after that point and that way you can handle multiple keys simultaneously like I said that's not going to be covered currently in this video if you if I get enough likes and all I'll probably have that up you know short enough time but uh, for now this is how to handle as far as putting text up on the screen and I hope you liked the video and let me know what you think and please subscribe and thank you very much for watching have a nice day